Hey everyone, we're testing out the WAN 2.2 sound to video model in Comfy UI. It was just released yesterday by the WAN AI team, they dropped the model weight on Hugging Face. And then the Comfy UI team repackaged it into their repo. First, I'll show you how it looks like from demo I generated. They mentioned the audio encoder and the new WAN 2.2 sound to video model on Hugging Face, plus this test workflow for sound to video examples, which I'm showing right here. Now let's check out the results and see how it turned out. Hey, here's Benji Channel. Did you know that lip syncing can be both an art and a science? Hey, OpenAI's new GPT is warmer and friendlier. Aw, did it get a hug from Elmo? Last model was colder than my ex's heart, spitting out facts like a robot. I've been playing around with it last night, doing some trial and error, testing different things with this model. Okay, so as you can see, the audio is kind of okay. The lip sync isn't as smooth compared to the last video we talked about, the infinite talk model using WAN 2.1 for lip syncing. I've tested that one a lot. You guys can check that out too. I also shared example workflows using infinite talk, and as you can see, the mouth movement, lip sync, and how the character goes from a static facial expression to something more dynamic and expressive. It feels really natural with infinite talk. But with this new WAN 2.2 update, the sound to video model still has some things that need improvement. First, look at the initial frames here. The first few frames from my reference image always come out kind of blurry, and then it slowly encodes back to the normal version of my reference image. And if you're using the video to video method, it still happens the same way. I've tested this with other clips using the WAN Video S2V, and the same blurry color degraded frames show up at the start. Then, after the first second or so, the second frames start looking normal again. Colors and shapes come back to match the original footage. The lip sync itself still looks pretty natural, but the audio timing synced with the video isn't as smooth as what I got with my earlier tests using the Infinite Talk AI models. So let's see how this video turned out. I did a few little enhancements and tried different generation methods. First, we've got this node here. It's a new native node in Comfy UI. Of course, you'll need to update your Comfy UI. My way of doing that is using a virtual environment, and I just type git pull in the Comfy UI folder. That pulls in the latest code, including the Python updates for one video, and adds the necessary nodes so you can actually use the sound to video model. Once you update, you'll have this native node called one sound image to video. This node lets you handle two types of video generation. The first is reference image mode. You input a sound and an image, and it generates a video, like a talking avatar where the character's lips sync to your audio. The second method uses reference motion or a control image. It's like a video to video setup we've tried before. Same concept. The video guides the motion, and the one sound to video model's only job is to handle the lip syncing. Let's go over the example workflow. I ran this one, and as you can see, there's the execution time and all the logs showing the process. It's actually pretty simple. No complex connections needed. I did try adding more complex setups, like model patching, but honestly, that made the quality worse. First thing to check, the model files. We're using the WAN 2.1 VAE and the UMT5 text encoder, the same ones we usually use for WAN 2.1 and 2.2. You can download these from the WAN 2.2 Comfy UI Hugging Face repo. The VAE is in one folder and the text encoder is in another. You can grab either version. I went with FP16 because I prefer it. That's just me. Then there's the audio encoder. This is new for the WAN 2.2 sound to video model, the Wave 2 vector FP16 model. Lastly, the diffusion model. There are a bunch of new WAN 2.2 models. Scroll down to the bottom of the Hugging Face page and you'll see the WAN 2.2 S2V14B BF16 Safe Tensors file. It's officially packaged by the Comfy UI team and it's huge, 32 gigabytes. Running it will also eat up about 32 gigabytes of VRAM. So if you've got less VRAM, I'd suggest checking out the WAN Video Wrapper FP8 version on Hugging Face. There's a scaled down FP8 version of the WAN 2.2 S2V model that's easier to run on lower end hardware. I've downloaded both the BF16 and the FP8 versions, 
If you're really tight on VRAM, like you've only got 12 or 16 gigabytes, you might want to try the GGUF quantized models from the QuantStack Hugging Face repo. They've got different quantization levels, and I tested the Q4 version. But keep in mind, the output tends to look a bit pixelated, especially in facial expressions. Fast movements get blurry, and hands especially turn out fuzzy. You'll need the Comfy UI GGUF custom nodes to load this model. Once installed, you'll see the WAN 2.2 S2V14BQ4 GGUF model appear. Then you can connect it directly to the model sampling node. No need to plug in the diffusion model the usual way. Back to the model. This is how you switch between using a regular diffusion model and a GGUF model. In this workflow, I'm switching back to the BF16 version. You can use whichever model your system can handle. And by the way, the audio encoder is super important for the sound to video model. We need it to extract and analyze the audio, then embed that into the image or reference motion video. This is another new native node in the update called Audio Encoder Encode. Not sure why they doubled the name, but hey, it is what it is. This node takes your audio input. In my case, I use sample audio I generated in 11 labs, just a six second clip fed into the audio input. You can clearly see where the audio encoder node goes. It's where we connect the Wave 2 VEC model, which was just released. I mentioned it earlier. You'll need to download it from the WAN 2.2 Hugging Face repo. Once you've got all these files, I've added a text note in the example workflow so you can see exactly which files go where. In the Comfy UI Models folder, under Diffusion Models, that's where you put the Safe Tensors files. I made a WAN 2.2 subfolder to keep things organized. Here's the BF16 and FP8 models. For GGUF files, save them in the UNET folder. And the audio encoder? That goes in a new folder called Audio Encoder, which was added in the recent Comfy UI update. That's where the Wave 2 VEC Large English FP16 Safe Tensors file goes. I also downloaded the Wave 2 VEC Chinese FP32 version, but it didn't work with the native node, kept throwing errors. So for now, stick with the FP16 models. So yeah, that's the list of files I've noted. I've got two generated videos here, one using the BF16 model from this workflow, and another using the GGUFQ4 quantized model. As you can see, the motion in the GGUF version is clearly lower quality, face, hands, everything. Compared to the BF16 version, it's a big difference. Let's play both with sound. Hey, here's Benji Channel. Did you know that lip syncing can be both an art and a science? Let me show you how it's done. Hey, here's Benji Channel. Did you know that lip syncing can be both an art and a science? Yeah, so obviously the two results are completely different just by switching the model. I also tried some more advanced settings, mixed different combinations while testing. For example, I used WAN Video Block Swap to reduce VRAM usage during runtime. It works just like in the WAN Video Wrapper, swaps blocks to save VRAM, though it uses more RAM and CPU. Torch Compile? I'd say it's optional. And Sage Attention? I turned it on and off. Didn't make much difference for me. Last generation took 4 minutes. With Sage Attention, maybe 3. It speeds things up a little, but doesn't improve video quality much. I also tested two LoRa's. One was Instagirl from Civitai, supposed to enhance portrait styles, but honestly, it's not really necessary for lip sync videos. If you generate the character image using WAN 2.2, it's already good. So we can skip that. But here's the LoRa we need to pay attention to, the Light X 2V model. We've been using it a lot with WAN 2.2. I tried it here, and when I connected it, the output had this weird flourish style and the lip and body movements weren't smooth. Check out this example. I used Light X 2V with a long clip, just testing performance. No sound embedded, but you can see the lips barely move, almost no facial expression at all. Another example, video to video test. The body moves a little, but the lips aren't syncing well. When you use Light X 2V and drop the CFG down to one, it really messes up the sound to video generation. I also tested with low sampling steps, like 8. Usually, 8 steps is fine for image to video or text to video, but for sound to video, it's low quality. The facial expressions are flat, lip sync is weak, not synced well with the audio, 
Not impressive at all when using WAN 2.2 sound to video with Allura, so let me generate one live using the same image. I'll use this 5 second audio clip so you can hear the difference with and without the LoRa. This time I'm using the FP8 model from the WAN video wrapper repo. So you can also see the quality difference between FP8 and the BF16 I used earlier. Alright, got the result. I used a 5 second audio clip. I optimized the workflow, block swap, sage attention, torch compile, all that stuff. One more thing, the context window. That's new in the latest Comfy UI update. Big plus for generating longer videos. There are two new native nodes. One general context window node for any model, and a special one video context window node. I tried the one specific one, but it caused errors. So I'm using the general one instead. I bypassed the model sampling shift just to test it. Hopefully more motion and expression. Visually, without sound, it looks natural. But the whole point of lip sync and talking avatars is matching the lips to the audio. Are you still resisting the future? If you're not using AI, you're just playing catch. As you can hear, the lip movement isn't that impressive. You can see it trying to sync with each word, but the mouth isn't moving much. That's because I used light X, 2V, and low sampling steps. You get this kind of stiff, minimal motion. It's a drawback of the current sound to video model. Even with different LoRa versions, it still happens. So let's bypass that and go back to the regular sampler. Just like in the example workflow, set sampling steps back to 20 and CFG to 6. I'll run it again and compare. I'll copy the previous result down here so we can compare side by side. Generating a new one with normal settings. I'm recording the process too so you can see how it runs. Earlier without optimizations, it took 4 minutes. With all the tweaks, let's see how fast it is now. Okay, both are done. This one's before frame interpolation, 16 FPS, and this one's after doubled FPS. Both show more motion, better facial expressions, and natural body language, like hand gestures. Let's bring down the interpolated version and do a side-by-side. -side. On the left, the new one. No LoRa, sampling steps 20, CFG 6. On the right, the old one with light X 2V, CFG 1, sampling steps 8. Same character, same audio. Huge difference, totally different results just by changing settings. The one with light X2V and low steps has stiff lips and flat expressions. The other one, more facial movement, hand gestures, everything's enhanced. Generation took about 3 minutes for sampling, plus a few seconds for interpolation. And check out the interpolated version, it's even smoother. After doubling the FPS, the motion between frames is way more fluid. Even synced side by side, you can see the character moves more naturally. Are you still resisting the future? If you're not using AI, you're just playing catch. So my takeaway? Right now, with WAN 2.2 S2V, don't use LoRa's to lower sampling steps, especially Light x 2 v It doesn't work for video. You end up with a Stone Age mouth and a frozen face. Yeah, it might take only a minute to generate, but it's a waste of time. You can't use it. Stick with normal settings. With optimizations and the context window, generation time dropped from 4 to 5 minutes to around 3. And we can now generate longer videos, though the max length depends on your hardware. Lower-end GPUs might not handle 30 seconds or more. You also need enough RAM to temporarily store processed video frames. So yeah, keep that in mind. Anyway, that's how I tested image to video with S2V. Oh, and I'm deleting that light X2V. Just not worth it. Next up. Video to video generation using the same WAN sound to video node. Instead of a reference image, we're using a reference video for motion. We feed in the video frames, stack them into reference motion, and make an existing character talk. Here's a test clip. A lady turning her head. I'll run it with settings similar to the image to video test. But for video to video, we need to do a few things differently. First, load the audio using the load audio node. Oh, and for audio crop the time input, some people mess this up. If you want 5 seconds, type 05, not 5.0. My audio here is 16.19 seconds, but my video is only about 6 seconds long. So I'll set it to 5 or 6 seconds and see how it goes. Next, input the dimensions, width, 
and height. I'm using 480p so it's accessible for everyone. I set up two input options, load video by upload or by file path. If your video's in another folder, just paste the path. Bypass one or the other, don't use both. Then I resize the video frames and extract the first frame as the reference image. Whenever you load a video, the first frame becomes the initial image. The AI uses it as the input reference. Then the rest of the resized frames go into reference motion. Let's see how it looks. I'm using the WAN 2.2 S2VFP8 model. I've connected the LoRa here just for testing, don't recommend it, but I'll run it so you can see what happens with video to video. As you can see, the first frame is used as the reference image, then fed into the sampler. I set CFG to 4 and steps to 8, but since I'm using Light X2V, it overrides everything and forces CFG back to 1. So yeah, generation is faster, but the result isn't usable. Here's the output. Generation took 1 minute 47 seconds, plus frame interpolation. It's about 2 minutes total with Light X2V. And here's the result doubled FPS. But as you can see, the lip sync, especially the teeth, isn't great. Some words sync okay, but fast speech? The lips can't keep up. That's the downside of low sampling steps with this Laura. Are you still resisting the future? If you're not using AI, you're just playing catch up. Now I'll run another test, same workflow, but no light X2V. I'll set sampling steps back to 20 and CFG to six, or even seven if I want more motion. I'll use the same settings as before. All right, here's the new result. Even without interpolation, it looks way better than the LoRa version. Now let's apply frame interpolation and do a side-by-side. -side. Visually, the mouth movement has way more expression, more effort to sync with each word. Let's hear it. Are you still resisting the future? If you're not using AI, you're just playing catch. With video to video, the lip sync is accurate. The timing is clean. Totally different from the low step LoRa version. So yeah, my suggestion, stick with normal sampling settings, even for video to video. It takes a little longer, but it's worth it. Don't waste time generating robotic, unusable clips. One last thing, longer videos. You can generate them using the context window, but it depends on how many frames your input video has. In this example, I only had 169 frames, so max is about 6 seconds. I'll test a longer one. Hey, OpenAI's new GPT is warmer and friendlier? Aw, did it get a hug from Elmo? Last model was colder than my ex's heart, spitting out facts like a robot. All right, that's it. We've got image to video and video to video using the WAN 2.2 sound to video model. You can create talking avatars or animate existing characters. I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one. See ya.